About two kilometers away from Bhantesarai district, tourists can visit the famous Bhantesarai temple. Built approximately in 967 AD, the temple was dedicated to Narayana and Shiva during the era of King Rajendra Varman Tep II and King Jayavarman V under the guidance of their royal teacher Nyanya Vorahe. And when visiting the Bhantisrai temple, it is extremely difficult not to reflect upon the splendid and astonishing stone arts. In addition, the use of pink sandstone is a unique feature that separates Bhantisrai from other temples. Even though the temple was created in the 10th century, the sculptures are sustained until today due to the quality of the sandstone. In addition, Bhantisrai carvings are precisely detailed to the point where it is unbelievably difficult for tourists to believe that they are engraved on blocks and blocks of stones. Many even mistook it for wooden or brick carvings. Furthermore, the construction elements in the Bhantisrai temple are interesting as well. There are noticeable numbers of laterites which were incorporated with the use of pink sandstones. For instance, laterites were used to build the fortresses, fields, gate, subordinate buildings, and added layers of the towers. Additionally, brick was another contributor as well. Brick was included in the construction of the central tower's roof, the roof of the library, also known as Hao Trai, an enclosed wall and the western door frames. If we look at the pictures of the Bhantesarai temple, it illustrates the use of wood as one of the ingredients to build the subordinate building roof structure and galleries as well. Unfortunately, most of the galleries are gone. Only some walls and pillars are left. On the other hand, the origin of the pink sandstone is still being debated among archaeologists and experts on where they originated. One site said it was extracted from the Gulen Mountain where the sandstone is extremely thick, measuring up to 20 meters. However, the composition is lighter than the one we see in the Mandisri temple today. Whereas the contrasting view stated that the origin could be somewhere nearby for some researchers, discover a hole in the earth around 10 meters deep at the foot of a mountain. Apart from showcasing the artistic features, the carvings also vividly symbolize Hinduism. Then, the illustrations and decorations are divided into two categories similar to the placement of gods in the three towers. The central and southern towers are dedicated to Shiva, while the northern tower was dedicated to Narayana. As a result, we can see the gable and subordinate buildings on the southern and middle towers mostly describe the mythical tales of Shiva. In contrast, the carvings of the Northern Tower are mostly related to the mythical tales of Narayana. If one would have stood perpendicular to the inner temple, you would have taken notice some of the important sculptures such as Shiva Natrat or Lord Shiva of Dancing imprinted onto the first gate eastern gable when counting from inside out. On the Southern Library, there are carvings of Shiva defeating Asura embedded onto the Eastern Gable and the destructions of Lord Kamadev at the Western Gable. As for the Northern Library, there are two significant sculptures on each gable. Namely, the Eastern Gable has carvings of the Battle of Kandavar forest between Krishna and Indra. 
whereas the western gable has illustrations of King Kamasa assassination. To add on, there are many more carvings associated with other gods, including the story of Ramayana as well. On the other hand, the name of this temple, Asbanti Sri, also has an interesting interpretation as well. According to the archaeologists, the word Banti was generally coined by the locals who were living around the temple. People usually refer to temples that were surrounded by huge stone fortresses as Banti, or protected base. This has become a norm and was applied to other temples as well. For instance, the temples of Banti Thom, Banti Ampal, Banti Kdai, and Banti Samurai. However, what should be taken into serious consideration is the next word, Srai. The word Srai does not refer to the word female as we would interpret it during the present time. Instead, it means power, happiness, and fortune. Moreover, the holy Shiva Lingam, installed at the central tower of the Mantisrei temple, was interpreted as the most divine being of the three worlds. Generally, during the Inkorian period, the name of the temple was always chosen according to the most important deity of that temple. Therefore, the full name of Bente Sri Temple is Preko Madayan Sri Trai Pohvane Maheso. However, the name Bente Sri was a result in which Khmer people shortened it for the sake of convenience. <laughs>